Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Thanks for joining me. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about heaters. So in the last video, Adam78 commented that he could see some condensation in one of my heaters. And it reminded me of several questions I've fielded over the months and years where people have been asking about condensation in heaters. And it seems to be one of those arguments that spirals out of control. It's very much the aquatic version of saying what's better, a PlayStation or an Xbox or Apple or PC or Android and iOS, all these things. Okay, maybe not quite, but you know what I mean. So if you see a heater with condensation inside it, perfectly reasonable, go and seek advice. You could ask a shop, you could ask the internet, and most people will tell you that it's gubbed. That it's no longer any good. Uh, it needs to be returned, try and get a refund. But I don't share that opinion. And I know it's an unpopular opinion to go the opposite direction, but I think it's usually fine because it's physics. That's just how condensation works. If you have a glass heater, inside that glass heater you have the element, the heating element, that's making it warm in there. And it's trying to heat up colder water that's outside. And when you have cold outside, warm inside, you get condensation. There's just no getting away from it. Now, you wouldn't get that in some of the higher end brand of heaters because they are created where they're factory sealed uh, in a hermetically sealed environment. There's a vacuum, there's no humidity in the air. But these cheap heaters, the ones that you can get for a tenner, they are not going to be created and built in a, in a vacuum. There's, there's moisture and there's humidity that is in the air. So when they are sealed, that moisture exists as humidity inside the heater. Um, and it's just going to turn into condensation as soon as you get that hot inside, cold outside. It's just the way it works. When you see it, when you, you see it in old windows that aren't double glazed and th all, all that sort of thing. It's, it's, just, it's just the way things are. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're about to get electrocuted if you put your hand in the water because there's a hole somewhere. What it doesn't mean is initially that it's broken. If you look on some of the manufacturer's websites, they will explain this. Um, it's just the way things are. That's the reason you can get heaters for 10 quid versus 100 quid. There are many different heaters. Now I'm talking about the glass type, uh, the kind of cheapo submersible heaters. They do a job. If they last you a couple of years, you're usually going to be more than happy with that. What I'm not talking about is seals that are broken or a crack that's actually flooded the inside of the heater. Then you're on a hide into nothing, that heater is ready for the bin, you will have to replace it. But I've been running my heaters where they've got a little bit of condensation the day I put them in the aquarium and they're still going strong years and years later. Um, pick your own brand, I'm not here to tell you one brand's better than another, but I have had expensive heaters in the past which have broken in different ways. But I've, I've had a Eheim Jaeger which has tried to boil some of my discus before. So I would obviously look out for um, heating controllers and that kind of thing if you are worried about it. But my my take on it is go for the cheap stuff, connect it through a heating controller, and you've kind of protected yourself that way. Um, I have had titanium heaters in the past which have electrocuted the tank, and you can feel that if you have a little cut in your finger or something, you put your finger in the water, you can feel the tingle. Just take it out, replace it, <laughs> job done. Um, I just wanted to put an end to this myth that's out there that if you see condensation within a heater it means it's broken or that a seal's gone or something's wrong with it and it needs to be returned. It's, that's just not the way things work. So while we're on the subject we might as well tackle a couple of the other common issues and see how many arguments we can get started in the comments down below. What are the things that I see most on Facebook groups and that kind of thing? The first is do you even need a heater? Most people live in centrally heated houses these days um, certainly if you've got an aquarium in your living room and you're keeping temperate fish, things like that, it's never going to drop that cold because you would be uncomfortable, so the fish wouldn't be that uncomfortable. So have a look at some experienced keepers and see what kind of environment the fish need to be kept in. You might not even need a heater because your room's going to be warm enough. People complaining that their heaters are too big or telling people that they have heaters that are overpowered or too many heaters. Piffle. Your heater, unless the heater's older than you are, so go and check these things obviously, but 
99% of them all have thermostats, which means you set a temperature, so unless your heater is faulty, when it reaches that temperature it's going to cut off and help maintain your water at that. It's actually a very good idea to have more than one heater, because then you've got some kind of failsafe in there. Whether you want to have one, more than one heater that is capable of running the tank on its own, or you have two slightly smaller heaters, knowing that if one fails, the other one will keep things going until you can replace it. Totally up to you. But remember these things have thermostats, they are not going to boil your fish tank if they're working correctly. On a similar vein, when it's summer and your tank's getting hot because the weather's too hot, don't switch your heater off and take it out. It's got a thermostat. It's not making it any worse. Just leave the heater alone. Don't put your heater vertically. Why would you do that? The heater, the heating element is generally at the bottom and the heat's going to rise and the thermostat is generally at the top. So it's going to be very hot up here. The heat's going to rise, the thermostat's going to think, oh, it's awful hot in here, I'll not do it. But your tank is actually not hot enough or not what you want to get to. So generally they want to be um, horizontal or a slight diagonal. Get them in some kind of flow so as at least the water is getting around and you've got a consistent temperature throughout your tank. Don't take it out of your tank when it's plugged in. So if you're doing a water change, something like that, just be careful of the positioning of your heater so as the water level isn't dropping below the heater because this thing will start to continue to heat up and then when you put fresh water in, it explodes. Obviously these things are all dependent on the brand of heater you've got so consult the manual if it comes up on or look it up on the website or something along those lines. Don't just take everything I'm saying for granted because some meters are meant to be stored in certain configurations and some are sized differently and some might not have a thermostat and they're set to a specific temperature. So check the manual. So quick one today, hope that makes sense. Hope that's helped someone. Thank you to Adam for inspiring me to make that video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.